Hello and welcome back to Helicopter Lessons in 10 Minutes or Less. It's Jacob again, and this episode will combine the basics I've covered in my first six videos and demonstrate how they all play important roles in the process of a helicopter taking off into forward flight. If you're watching these videos in order, hopefully from my playlist uh, called The Basics, you should have already a foundation and general understanding of things like dissymmetry of lift and transverse flow effect, etc. But if not, I recommend watching those videos first. I'll put the links in the description below. And with that in mind, let's get started. Uh, like I said in this video, we're going to be talking about the aerodynamics of a takeoff. I've broken it down into three steps, uh, just for simplicity. So that first step is going to be the aircraft that I hover, then we're going to have the transition phase, and then we'll have the forward flight. Alright, so the hover phase. We've already talked about it in our other video. The aircraft is sitting here at a stationary hover. The airflow is vertically coming down through the disc, creating these wingtip vortices. Um, and relatively inefficient as far as lift goes. Uh, the, motor required, or the motor flight requires more power than forward flight due to the decrease in e efficiency of the rotor system when operating in this disturbed recycle uh, vortices filled air. So what does that look like on the rotor system? Just for simplicity, it's a decrease in efficiency, decrease in lift when operating at a hover. Uh, just for this video, we'll call that hover as it zero knots. As we start to transition forward, we're going to get into things like the symmetry of lift. It's a difference in lift in the aft half, or correction, in the advancing and retreating portion of the rotor disc. So if our rotor system is going this way, we'll say counterclockwise, just like in all the other videos, the advancing side is creating more lift than the retreating side. This dissymmetry of lift is any kind of airspeed, so greater than zero knots of airspeed. But we can't just leave it at this. Due to gyroscopic precession, everything manifests 90 degrees later. So this actually becomes, when rotated 90 degrees around, this rotates to the front half of the disc, and this rotates to the aft half, so results in more lift on the front half of the disc than the aft half of the disc. Also, as we're transitioning into forward flight, we're going to get into transverse flow effect. And this is that period in between 10 to 20 knots when the airflow is more horizontal over the front half of the disc and more vertical over the aft half of the disc. So what does that mean for us? Transitioning forward, it's going to result in more lift on the front half of the disc than the aft half. So quick review on that one. It's our helicopter with transition into forward flight. This airflow is more horizontal over the front half and becomes more vertical over the aft half, so more induced flow, less lift, less efficient on the aft half than the forward half. Um, but we can't leave it right there. We're going to have to take it into account gyroscopic precession. So this makes everything manifest 90 degrees later in the plane of rotation. So that results into this forward half rotating around to the left half, increase in lift, and decrease in lift on the right half. So this is causing that right roll between 10 to 20 knots. So these two together in the transition phase are going to combine to form an effect that looks like this. Increase in lift from plus plus, we're going to have plus minus, plus minus, minus minus. So what does that mean? We have far more lift being created in the front left quadrant than the aft right quadrant. So this is causing a pitch up and a rolling right when we're transitioning, especially between this 10 to 20 knots. But once we get through this transition phase and we get into forward flight, uh, we start to get more efficient and have a slightly different characteristic of lift. So we talked about at a hover, we're operating in our own wingtip vortices. Transitioning, we're transitioning through these vortices, getting into cleaner, undisturbed air. Forward flight, this is when we get to effective translational lift, which is around 16 to 24 knots. This is when the rotor disc has outrun its vortices and begins to operate in cleaner air. So where we had earlier, less lift, less efficiency um, during airflow at a hover. Now we've gotten past the vortices and it's an increased lift equally on all parts of the rotor system. Um, as we're in forward flight, we still have to take into account dissymmetry of lift because this is any kind of velocity as we move forward. So we'll carry this, this over. Same thing as we had before, more lift on the advancing side than the retreating side. We're gonna account for gyroscopic precession uh, combining these two, because these are both in effect in forward flight, this one not going to have much of an effect on gyroscopic precession, 
or by gyroscopic precession because it's equal across the rotor disc. So that combines into plus 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 minus and plus minus. So still more lift being created on the front half of the disc than the aft, but we don't have that role anymore. Uh, generally, uh, we're just a lot more efficient because we've outrun those wingtip vortices. So this differs drastically in each phase. So when we're taking off, we're generally less efficient, requires more power for flight. We go through this transition phase. We have more lift on the front left quadrant than the aft right. So that's that pitch up right roll between uh, roughly uh, 10 to 20 knots, and then once we get to 16 to 24 knots, we've outrun these wingtip vortices, and now we have increase in efficiency, still taking into account the symmetry of lift, and this is more lift across the entire disc, but a little bit more on the front half, so we have to keep that forward cycling to maintain that level of flight. Vice versa, when we're landing, uh, it's going to be reversed, so we're going from this mode of flight, efficient across the entire disc, with a little bit of more lift created on the front half, getting down between uh, less than ETL, but greater than zero knots. We're in this environment of transition where we're pitching up, rolling to the right. That's where we're having this aerodynamic, uh, or these aerodynamics on the rotor disc, and then down to a hover, decrease in efficiency across the entire rotor disc. All right, so that conducts my, or that concludes my aerodynamics in a takeoff. I hope this helped clarify some of my previous videos by just culminating everything into one uh, video where you can see the transitions and whatnot as we go from a stationary hover transition and into forward flight. Um, now, if you've already got a, um, a decent understanding of helicopter knowledge and whatnot, and you want to kind of further your professional reading, I'd recommend reading Cyclic and Collective by Sean Cole. I'll put the description to that in the comments. Just kind of takes these aerodynamics to another step, gets even more in the weeds about specifics of what exactly is going on. If you're still beginning and you're uh, really just trying to understand the basics here, um, I'm pulling a lot of this information from the Rotocraft Flying Handbook. I'll put that link in the description as well, but it sets out a lot of good pictures, um, information, just explanations that you can really get a good start on uh, learning these aerodynamic principles. Uh, but once again, that concludes the video. Uh, my name's Jacob. I hope you uh, enjoyed um, this description. Thanks for watching, and if you like the videos, hit like, uh, leave a comment, and as always, safe flying. Have a good day.